Briefly want to mention the sound disclaimer, the dress room does squeak quite a bit. Okay, so this is what it looks like all done and all put together. As you can see, it could use a little bit more pressing, but for the most part, I got the design that I wanted. And this is a basic shift dress. It's not too crazy, not too complicated. And it really comes down to just like making sure that you take your time and that you make the dress nice and neat. Because something as simple as a shift dress can transform into something very, very elegant. When you take your time and sort of make sure that your seams are matching up, making sure you press as you go along, you're taking out the bulk in the seams, and that you really look at your uh, darts and those different kinds of things. It can turn something very simple like a shift dress and make it very elegant. Speaking of elegance, I also wanted to just briefly go over how I added appliques to my dress because my sketch called for appliques, your sketch may not call for appliques. I'm just going to briefly go over how to elevate your dress a little bit. So what I did was I cut several of these appliques and that's something you do when you've um, actually done either the muslin mock-up or just assembled it together because you want to start to sort of map out how many of these you're going to need to complete your design. So you don't want to wait till the, you could wait till the end, but you can also do it in the process of when you cut everything out. So I already placed one here and now I'm just going to sort of let the applique itself sort of speak to me, so to speak, to see how I want this to lay. I do want it to have a bulk of the applique towards the bottom because I want it to have this sort of like creeping effect that's creeping up on the waistband. So I'm going to try to achieve that along here. Once I'm pretty comfortable with where it is, kind of want to make sure there's some symmetry there as far as how closely it comes in. I'm gonna move that over a little bit. Once I feel good about that, and obviously you can keep sort of taking a step back and having a look at things before you go in. Appliques can be hand sewed or machine sewed. I often just uh, hand sew my appliques because it's, um, it's a lot more precision involved, but you can also once you get the hang of things, you can also machine stitch your appliques onto your dress. It's a matter of just getting comfortable with the precision of it all. So again, going back to my original sketch, I did have some along the shoulder. So I'm just going to add some more there. And you're just going to take those pearl head pins. And why do you use these type of pins? Well. Um, the easiest answer is they're easier to see when you're removing. So as you're hand sewing, the worst thing you want to happen is you leave, or any sort of sewing that you're doing, you don't want to leave any excess pins inside the garment. And I've actually had garments that I've actually altered and saw that some had accidentally, I mean it does happen, left a pin inside of the dress and it just was inconspicuous enough that the person that was wearing it didn't notice. But you just always want to make sure, especially when you're doing appliques, that you um, use the pearl head pins and that way you can easily take them out as you are hand stitching. So I'm just going to go under here. Now when you're sewing these on, there's one or two ways you can do it. Most of the time, especially when I'm doing I sew the appliques on, obviously you have a mannequin. I sew them on the mannequin themselves. Why? Because when you lay it flat a lot of times, there's puckering that can happen so that when you try to place it back on the dress form or back on an actual body, it's bunching in different areas. So if you do it on the person or on a dress form, you know that it's gonna stay flat in that area. Whereas if you lay it flat, then you might run into trouble of it bunching and then when you place it back after you've done, you know, like an hour of hand sewing and you realize it's all bunched in this area. So if you can at all have it, you know, be on a dress form, I do recommend using a dress form. So I'm just going to go to the back because I also have the same design towards the back and using the largest area here, again, just sort of keeping with the design of having it sort of like wrap around the waist area. And you can do whatever it is you like. You can use 
obviously different colors you can just decide you know what i've done enough i've gone as far as i'm gonna go with this right now i'm happy with the way it looks i'm not looking for any more pizzazz you know or you can um prints are a little bit trickier and they really rely heavier on making sure you cut and assemble properly that when you're doing prints cutting and assem assembling properly is like paramount to a really well-made print garment I personally don't love prints. I love simple flat uh, colors that I can sort of expand on and grow on. So that's just my personal preference. Um, obviously, I, I love doing things like this when I want to add something extra to my garment. I don't particularly care for prints itself. So that's just what one side looks like. So once you're done with that, I'm just going to briefly go into how you actually just hand sew. Okay. So again, I'm just going to briefly cover how to actually sew appliques onto a dress. You're going to get the matching thread of the actual applique you're going to sew because you want it to be inconspicuous on the applique. Now you can use a regular sharp needle like I'm using, or if it's heavily beaded with tons of beads that you're going to have to work your way through, I would definitely say use a beading needle. The only difference is beading needles bend a lot easier, so you have to just make sure that it's heavily beaded and that's the only alternative you have. Otherwise, um, using a normal thread and needle is just fine. So first what I do is I sort of like place my hand here and I'm picking up just a little bit of the dress. Now keep in mind, if this were aligned, I would probably want to do a lot of this before I um, line the dress because you don't, the, the thing about lining is you're not supposed to see any marks in the lining itself. So if you get to the stage where you are lining a dress, you would want to put these appliques on first and then go ahead and put the lining. And essentially you're just going to go in and you can either do a running stitch and I normally just do a basic running stitch, make them nice and small. As long as your thread doesn't bunch, there it is. See what I'm talking about? That pull, if you pull it too hard, then you have bunching. And then you just go, and, and the thing is about the applique, you have to hit every area. So applique is beautiful and it's tedious and it's a lot of work and it's often why dresses are a little bit more expensive because you would have to get into all those little nooks Going to that part, I need to make sure those overlap with each other. And you just do it over the course of every part of the garment. You do the front, back, and definitely along those shoulders. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Videos are uploaded weekly covering dressmaking, fashion, lectures, and more.